Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. Today is going to be the German 10.5cm uh, artillery battery. Um, before I do any base coating with this, there's a few steps uh, I like to do. First up, I like to assemble the gun first, and this is the same for any uh, gun unit. Assemble the gun first and then lay it out so I can get the crew laid out in a decent position and so when uh, the crew are pink, uh, glued in, uh, the gun can fit on the base. I made the mistake uh, with my first couple of guns with uh, my gun just being able to sneak on the base. Um, so when that's done and all these are glued, the next step I do is I get rid of the gun because I'm going to do the gun separately. Is I'm going to add the texture for the base before I base coat and the texture I'll be using is Vallejo Thick Mud Acrylic nice and thick so you can apply it on and you can fill in all the gaps in the bases um, once it's dry check to see if there's no gaps and apply another coat so we'll have a look at when this is applied uh, so before I added the thick mud I uh, base coated the howitzers um, so basically what I did as soon as I put the uh, texture on the base I have put the howitzer back onto the base I haven't glued it, I've just pushed it down, so um, when the texture dries there will be some grooves to put the gun when you do go to glue it after everything's painted, just so everything is even and you haven't got like a wheel hovering in mid-air, because um, realistically the gun would s sink into the mud slightly. So I'm going to wait for this to dry now and then I'll add the extra components, so the um, ammo boxes, uh, spent uh, shell casings and shells. So wait now for that to dry. So the base is dry now and I've added the extras onto it and removed the gun. So now it's time to base coat um, the base and I'm going to use a grey army painter spray for that. And while that's drying I'm going to paint all the black parts of the howitzer. So basically the wheels and the uh, barrel of the gun black and I'm going to be using contrast black templar for that. So I gave uh, the wheels two coats of their uh, black templar paint. It did go on a bit thin and I just wanted to make it a little thicker. Um, so that bit's done now. The um, rest of the bases are still drying from their base coat. So I think it's best if we finish off the gun first uh, completely and then we'll move on to the infantry. Um, so next part I'm going to do some camouflage stripes on the gun shield and on the barrel and for that I'm going to be using Elysian Green uh, Citadel layer and I'll be using a base coating brush to apply this. So that's the first stripe done, uh, wait for it to dry and then we're going to be putting some flanking colour using Citadel Base Steel Legion Drab and use a highlighting brush. So that is the Steel Legion drab going around the Elysian green as you can see it does bring out the green against the uh, panther yellow. Uh, next step now for the gun is to go over the tool handles with Citadel base rhinoxide. I would use a precise detail brush for this one because the tool handles are quite um, small. Okay. So let's have a look at that when that's finished. Now the tool handles are painted, wait for them to dry and then go over the metal part of the tools using Citadel Base Lead Belcher and again use a precise detail brush. So now that's the metal part of the tools done, that is all the painting for the gun done. All that's left to do is the shading and for that I'll be using a Citadel Shade Agrax Earth Shade using a shading brush. Um, what I tend to do is shade half the model because um, I'm holding the other half and then wait for it to dry and then shade the other and then you just wait and then for the base to be done and then it can be glued on. So the shade is finally dry and here is the finished gun ready to be glued onto the base when it is finished. So this is the grey base coated um, teams for the artillery. Um, First step now is to apply some watered down rhinoxide to all the texture on the base um, 
uh, it's easier to water it down because there's a lot to cover and when it's watered down it does um, soak into the uh, crevices of the base. Uh, don't worry to go over too much on the infantry, infantry themselves because they're not painted yet. So the uh, texture on the base is all dry now. Um, I used a shading brush since I watered down the uh, rhinoxide quite a bit. Uh, I found the shading brush the best brush to use since it's the biggest one I've got and that got us done nice and quickly. So next stage now I'm going to be painting the uniform of the German Gunners and it's going to be uh, Vallejo paint and it's going to be German Field Grey. World War Two. So that's the tunics done, so uh, while I wait for that to dry I'm going to do all the ammo crates using uh, Vallejo Middlestone, so this is basically a panther yellow colour. So that's the crates done, uh, next step now we're going to be doing the helmets using Vallejo German Camo Dark Green. And if there's any uh, water bottles um, water canteens on the model, I would do that this colour as well. So that's the helmets done. Next step now we're going to be doing the boots, binoculars, the gaps in the ammo crates and uh, any shells on the model or on the base using Citadel Colour Contrast Black Templar. Uh, don't worry about the shells, there are more steps with that, it's just the, the overall colour is uh, black that I can see on pictures I've looked at. Uh, now that bit is done, uh, we're just going to be waiting for the black areas to dry, so while that is drying we're going to do the epaulettes on the German shoulders using Mephiston Red. Um, Using this colour because looking at their uh, box they came in, they are using red for that. I'm not much of an expert on German uniforms so I'm just going to go uh, with this colour. So that is the epaulettes done, they look quite nice. The, uh, if, they, if you think they're too bright on the model don't worry the shading should uh, dull it down quite a bit and blend it in with the rest of the uniform. So next we're going to do the gaiters using green grey and this is another Vallejo paint. So now that the gaiters are done we're going to be painting all the flash areas of the infantry using Vallejo flat flesh. So that's all the flesh bits done. Don't worry if it looks a bit patchy, there's going to be a few more steps concerning the skin areas, so these bits will be covered up later on. Um, while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to be painting the rammers that some of the guys are holding, and we're going to be using Rhinox Hide again for that. Uh, and if there's any tool handles on the models, uh, we'll be uh, painting that with this colour as well. After this step, we'll be painting all the belts on the models using Citadel, Dryad, Bark. Um, on the officers' belts, there may be some holsters and some of the pouches. Uh, I usually paint these this colour as well. Uh, now all the belts are done, uh, we're going to be doing the very bottom of the shell um, with Citadel, Balthazar Gold. So basically this is the very bottom of the shallow. We'll take a photo once it's done and we'll have a look at that now. So that's what I meant by the bottom of the shell. There is a bit of a ridge. Basically the ridge and everything below I did with Balthazar Gold. Uh, next step now there's a little detail on the collar. Um, I'm going to be doing that with Citadel Dawnstone. Uh, hopefully you could see by the photo what I was talking about on the collar. Uh, next bit, uh, we're going to be painting the belt buckles, the tips of the shells, 
uh, the binocular lenses and the ends of the ammo crate with Citadel base lead belcher. Uh, next step, I'm going to be uh, just going over the edges of the base. As you can see, there's a bit of uh, spillage from when uh, I did the texture. Uh, I'm going to be using a uh, grey that is as near enough to the base coat. So for me, it is Citadel Mechanicus uh, Standard Grey. But um, if anyone's been following this, um, just find whatever shade of grey matches best or whatever shade you used um, to base coat. Uh, just uh, neaten up because because that paint was really watery it has uh, gone over the edges. So once the bases are tidied up wait for the rest of the paint to dry and now these are ready to shade. Uh, so basically I'm going to be using Citadel shade Agrax earth shade to go over these. So just go over the models no need to go over the texture on the base. Um, and then when they dry we'll be ready for the next step. So now the shade is dried we're going to be highlighting the flesh areas with Citadel Kislev Flesh. So the skin is highlighted there's one more step for the skin so while that dries I'm going to be highlighting all the brass bits and the shells using Colours of War shell brass. So the shell casings are highlighted and while I'm still waiting for the flesh to dry I've painted in red uh, UL on my unit leader base. Uh, usually I have the guy uh, pointing out into the direction as my unit leader but just to make sure I'm quite clear who it is um, for my artillery units I put UL and for German units I tend to use red. Um, so when the skin is dry, last step of the painting is going to be shading the flesh using Citadel Shade Seraphim Sepia. So that concludes the painting part of this video, but we are, we are not done yet. So we're going to first attach the gun to the base using super glue, and then we'll go from there. Basically what we've got left is finishing off the uh, base. So now we have the gun super glued to the base. Um, you can all agree with me that the base is looking a bit sparse. So I'm going to be using some late summer static grass made by foreground uh, using basing glue. I'm going to apply this to most of the base. Uh, you don't have to use the same uh, colour grass as me, um, but this is what I prefer. So let's have a look at it when it's all on. So now the static grass is on the base, uh, the final uh, signature to this, I'm just going to add a, a tuft of um, Army Painter uh, Winter Tufts. Um, any tuft will do, or so I, some uh, of my British bases I've been adding flowers to it, just a little extra thing, just to add a bit of depth to the base, and then we'll, we'll be uh, done. And here we have the finished model, I, uh, I hope you all like it. Uh, obviously it takes a bit longer than tanks since you've got two lots of models to paint but I think um, if you do take your time with uh, the infantry models they do look a lot better um, so I'll put a couple of photos at the end of this video um, any questions, anything I've missed um, what I'm going to be painting next is I've got some 5cm uh, tank hunters so it's pretty much going to be exact same steps as this after that I have nothing to paint, um, but um, my orders for next month, if the British D-Day book doesn't uh, yield any new models, will probably be some Mirkwood Elves from the Middle Earth strategy battle game, which will be a bit different to all of your uh, World War II types. So uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, subscribe please.